Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite math topics on these tests. It's also one of those math topics that has the most real-world application out of any of those that you'll see. Because let's be honest, you're not going to use trigonometry in the real world unless you decide to become a surveyor or work in aerospace. It's just not going to happen. But with basic statistics, which is what we're going to talk about today, basically anything with any sort of business aspect to it at all will require a little bit of understanding of statistics. And fortunately for us, that's all that these tests require. So let's take a look. OK, statistics. Man, I really love stats. These days, I don't get to do quite as much statistics as I would like to. But when I was back in business school, man, I did a lot of stats there. And I can tell you from experience that statistics get really complicated really quickly. Uh, and you know that's true when the formula you're doing kind of stop involving numbers and start just being a bunch of Greek letters. It's, it's great. It's crazy. Uh, but uh, fortunately, on these tests, on SAT and ACT, they're not going to go nuts like that. And they're going to keep it really surface level, which is to be expected because, you know, everything on the test is pretty surface level. So, you know, what kind of stats do we need to know then? Well, not very many. And so the list is here, and you can read it with me. We've got mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and expected value. And I'll note that today is just a basic statistics overview. And so in future, I'm going to go and do more focused videos on the average and uh, expected value because there's some really interesting questions that you may see about those. But today, we're keeping it surface level. Um, but if you're wondering about that, and if you've seen those questions on the test, uh, wait until those videos exist and give them a watch. But for now, let's just define these terms. So first, we have the mean, which is just another word for the average. And the way that we calculate an average is we take the sum of all the numbers in a set of numbers, and we divide that by the number of numbers. And so you'll see me in future videos you know, simplify this to just say that the average equals the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. And being aware of that is going to really help us to cut through some of the fog of these more interesting average questions. Next, we have the median, and that's the middle of the ordered terms. Ordered there, indicating that the numbers need to be in order from least to greatest, or greatest to least. It doesn't really matter which way. But the way that we find the median is if there is an odd number of terms, the median is going to be a specific term in that list. So for example, the way that you find that, by the way, is let's say there were 13 terms in a series. We would divide that by 2, and we would get 6 and a half. And then we would round up to 7. So the seventh term is going to be the median. Now, that's not the number 7, because we don't know what the numbers are in the set. It's just the seventh term is going to be the median. So that's the middle term. And then if it were an even number of numbers in the set, we would basically just say, let's say it was 12. Separate that. You take the number of numbers divided by 2. You get 6. And then you use the sixth term. And then one greater than that, so the seventh term. And you take the average of those two terms. So you add those together and divide by two, which is taking the average. And so the median in an even numbered set of terms will be between the two middle, most middle terms. Next, we have the mode. And the mode is the most frequently occurring term. So whichever term is in there more often than the other ones, you don't need to have a mode on all for all these other statistical properties, there's going to be one of them. You're always going to have an average for a set of terms, but there may not be a mode for a set of terms. And so you just look for which one occurs the most frequently. Once in a while, you'll see the term bimodal on maybe an ACT is a, usually is a wrong answer for something. And all that means is just a set of terms that has two modes. So two different values that occur more way, way more often than the other values. So that's all that means. Next, we have the range, which is the maximum value uh, and the difference for, that has from the minimum value, so take the biggest number and subtract from that the smallest number, and that's the range. That's the distance between those two. And then we have the standard deviation, and that one sounds much more complicated than the others. Oh, deviation, standardized, what does that mean? So there's a big old equation associated with that that involves summing a bunch of differences of you know, the average of the term from the specific term squared and stuff like that. And you don't need to know that equation offhand. They, they're never going to ask you for a specific standard deviation value. They're just going to ask you basically understand what it means. And what it means is the variance or the variation in the values within the set. So if all the numbers are pretty much the same, like if it was 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, then that would have a low or in fact, zero standard deviation. And then if it was like negative 20, negative 5, 
60, 200, and 3,000. That's a big standard deviation because all those numbers are all over the place with respect to wherever the average is, which would be someplace between like zero and 3,000. So that's all standard deviation means. It sounds complicated, but it's just like how much variation is there within the numbers in the set. And finally, we have expected value. So like I mentioned, I'm absolutely going to do a full video on expected value just because it's sort of counterintuitive and also really interesting. And so look out for that. But for now, we're just going to say that the expected value is basically the weighted average of the outcomes based on those out the respective outcomes likelihoods. So we have like a discrete set of outcomes that can happen, or maybe it's continuous, but too much weeds is just weighted average based on the outcomes and, and leave it at that for today. And so not a ton of visuals there, but just some definitions. Let's actually go and take a look at some practice problems and see if we can't put these to the test. Okay, we've got two practice problems. I'm just going to show them one at a time. So go ahead and take a look at this one. Okay, let's take a look. So pro tip here, when you have a word problem, you can always look at the end and you can see if you can skip some work. So let's look at the end and see what the question is. Which of the following is the median number of crunches his students could complete in 45 seconds? So we're looking for the median and honestly, Mr. Rogers, Coast West High School, very silly, totally irrelevant. They do at least tell me that there are 12 uh, values here. And so I'll know that I basically need to get the sixth and seventh value and that'll kind of be it. And so what some people will do is they'll write all, these are clearly out of order. And so you don't want to take the median here because they're not in order, but some people will put all these in order and all you really need to do is get up to the seventh term and that way you'll know that you're right where you need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So looking at my values, it looks like 12 there is the smallest one. We'll cross that out. We have three 15s, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's why I put 15 in here because that's the mode, which is, this is not the mode, that's one of the lower values. And next we have 17, and then 23 looks like, yep, that's our next one. And then 29. Okay, and so we need to find the average of 23 and 29. 23 plus 29 is 52, and 52 divided by 2 is 26. And so that's our median. Okay, here's our next one. Take a look and see what you can do. Okay, so pretty limited in the math here and mostly just understanding content, which is definitely, and this is basically just a question that I've seen on an SAT and an ACT and just change the numbers a little bit. So which of the following sets of numbers has the greatest standard deviation? Well, like I kind of mentioned in the explainer part of this video, you want to take the one with the greatest variation in the terms and one, two, three, four, five is all kind of smushed together. And so is, you know, three, 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 which has no deviation because it's all the same thing. And then same so with, with C here, it's all kind of bunched around three. And the one that's the most spread out around the mean and incidentally the mean here for this, this is, you know, three because negative 15 plus 30 divided by five is going to be three. And that's the same average for this set of terms and for this one. And so that's how you, and also for this one as well, I think. And so this is how you know that this is greater deviation because it's all over the place. Everything is, for, all the actual values are very far from the average of the values. So that's going to be our greatest standard deviation. Okay, that's it for this video. Now, I'm biased because I love stats, but I really do think that not only are these topics essential for your success in the test, but they're also just important for you to understand in your everyday life. So a nice instance of something from the test being useful with real-world application here. If you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video and subscribe to Pod Education. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.